Hey everybody and welcome to the Bullshit Party. And in this one we're gonna be comparing the three dukes that are in GTA Online, in case you were wondering which one is best. We're gonna go over the look of each one of the cars, we're gonna see what customization options each of them have, and of course we're gonna compare them head to head to see which one is fastest and which one has the best brakes. So for the untrained eye you probably don't know which one is which, so let me explain a little bit. The one that we have here on the left is the original Dukes and it came with the original release of GTA Online. The one we have here in the middle is the newest addition to the GTA Online Dukes family. And on the right we have the Armored Dukes of Death. Let's go over the price of each one of the cars to see which one has the best value, at least up front. The original Impotent Dukes is $62,000 or free for any returning player of GTA Online. For the longest time, this was my favorite muscle car in the game. I really don't have anything bad to say about it, it looks awesome, it handles great and it's sort of powerful for a muscle car. And let's not forget the vinyl roof. Oh yeah. Next up we go to the Warstock cash and carry site to check out the Dukes of Death. You might notice here that it says free, but the car isn't free. It's only free if you're a returning player to GT Online. Regular price for this car for anyone else is $665,000. And for that amount you get an armored version of the Dukes. So, good. And last but not least, going back to Southern San Andreas Super Autos, we have the Beater Dukes. The newly released Beater Dukes I should say. And as you can see in the photos of the car, it has seen better days, at least its stock version has. And the price is right in the middle of the other two for only $380,000. There are four main performance criteria each car in GT Online is evaluated. Those are acceleration, top speed, braking and traction. Since you, like any other normal person, is gonna upgrade their cars, let's look at the upgraded version of each of them and see how they stack against each other. Oh, and if you're wondering what's the orange car on the left, don't worry about it. Back to the comparison, as soon as we can pull up the statistics, you can see that all three cars are pretty much the same. With the Beater Dukes and the original Dukes being what I would consider identical. If we are to go by this statistic, then the Duke of Death should have better acceleration, traction, top speed and overall performance compared to the other two. But the thing is, it's not all about performance and we need to take customization into account as well. Even though all three are muscle cars, muscle doesn't determine the winner here. At least in my book it doesn't. But since all three cars are spread into three completely different price points and each of them have something unique to offer, you as the person that's gonna buy the car. Hopefully by the end of the video you would have made up your mind which one is best for you. And the first thing we're gonna be checking out is interactivity and outside features. As you can see here all three cars have the exact same level of interactivity. Yes, yes, I know, the Beater Dukes, but the only reason it can't open its hood is because of the hood that I chose. So we're not gonna be counting that against it. Doing a 360 spin around the cars, well, shows how pretty they are, at least in my opinion. And the main difference that I wanna mention again is that the Duke of Death is armored, and it shows through the exterior. Also, if you like to play in first person, the visibility in that car is pretty horrible, but I'll show you that in a minute. The thing that I wanna point out now is that the Duke of Death has a working light bar that you can turn on and off at will. The other two cars don't have this and they don't have it as an option, so you might consider this if you're looking to ride in the nighttime. And it's time to see which is the fastest Dukes in a straight line. Since I wanted to make this as fair as possible, not do wheelies or burnouts, I did the exact same thing for all three cars and that was press the accelerator to the max. I think it comes to no surprise that we have the Dukes of Death as a winner, but what I think comes as a surprise is that we have the less expensive original Dukes faster than the Beater Dukes. I guess it's wrong what they say, money doesn't buy power. Second test we have here is we have each of the cars accelerating to 100 km an hour or miles, and at a specific section of the road I hit the brakes and see which car stops the fastest. And in a surprising turn of events, we have the Beater Dukes in first place, the Dukes of Death in second, and the original Dukes in third. And next up, we're gonna see which car can do wheelies, or which car can do better wheelies, I should say. And the first car we have is the original Dukes. As you can see, easy, first time, awesome. Next up, we have the Dukes of Death, and here it gets a little bit more tricky because the car is more powerful, but it's manageable, and I was able to do it on my second attempt which leads us to the Beater Dukes. And this one was, uh, well, how should I put this? Sort of impossible. I'm sure a wheelie bar would have solved my problem, but I don't want to put a wheelie bar on my car. 
The problem here I believe is that the car actually has too much traction and is too powerful. So the moment you lay off the brake the car just jumps, hit the rear bumper and doesn't do much more. So next I did what any sane person would do. Wait, did I say sane? So just to recap, the Dukes of Death is the fastest one, the original Dukes does the best wheelies and the Beater Dukes has the most customization options. And since it's pretty much a tie at this point, which one is the most fun to drive? The original Dukes is very retro, it's very slidey and it does feel like an old muscle car. It's a great choice, it's a cheap choice for anybody looking to get a cheap, affordable, cool car that's very very fun to drive. But with the new Beater Dukes being released just a couple of days ago, it really has become one of my favorite muscle cars. It has the same slidey mechanics as the original Dukes, but it has much 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 more in terms of customization. And for me, personalizing your car and making it your own is half of the fun of driving it. Well, that and crashing into everything you see. But going back to the customization, you pay 380000 up upfront for the car, and then you have a plethora of customization options to choose from. One thing that I feel is important to say that when you get the car, you receive a beat up piece of crap that doesn't really resemble what you're looking at right now. But that's okay, maybe some people want to go for the rusty look and leave the car as it is with all the panels broken. And talking about broken panels, this is not something that you can expect from the Dukes of Death. As I said in the beginning of the video, this is an armored version of the Dukes. But armor is not the only thing that you're getting, you're also getting that sick light bar. No, but in all seriousness, on top of the sick light bar, you're also getting an upgraded version of the performance of the Dukes. It builds up on every aspect, acceleration, top speed, braking and traction, to give you the ultimate Dukes experience. And yes, I heard myself there, I sounded like an old car salesman. So I guess in closing, it all depends on what you want to do with the car. If you want something very cheap and affordable, get the original Dukes. If you want to customize your car, make it your own and have a lot of fun with it, get the Beater Dukes. If you want to be healthy, get a bike. Or if you're looking for something armored, heavy duty, that's gonna withstand a couple of bullets. And as we saw, has better acceleration than the other two, and it should have better braking, at least on paper, but that wasn't the case, at least in my test. Get the Dukes of Death. You need to see if you are a returning player for GT Online, because if a car is free for you, then get the free one, test it and see how you feel with it. If you like it, get the other two like I did. You'll have a lot of fun with either one. And with that, I will be bringing this video to a close. Thank you so much to everybody who watched, hopefully you liked the video and if you did, please don't forget to leave a like, it really does help out the channel a lot. And if you're not yet a subscriber, consider subscribing, we have a lot more cool content to come in the future. And with all that, I'll catch you in the next one.